Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to sit down with you all and talk about the things that I think you should do before starting your Etsy store and what I personally did before I started mine. So if you don't know me and you're new here, I'm Casey and I have an Etsy store and I make videos online about Etsy and Etsy related content. I put them out every week so if that sounds like something you might like, please consider subscribing. Starting an Etsy store or any business in general can be quite scary. You're really taking a leap into the unknown. So you have to have faith in yourself and faith in your products. So I'm really excited today to go over what I did before I started my store and give you some tips. I really hope that you find this video helpful and let's get into it. The very first thing I did before starting my Etsy store, which I think is quite essential is doing research and it didn't matter what the research was if you could do research on something I was doing it so when I first started out on Etsy I was solely a baby onesie store so as you may have guessed I was doing research on baby onesies the kind of baby onesies out there the material what it's made out of how it's made where it's coming from and all that good stuff I also did a lot of research on vinyl because I do use um heat transfer vinyl. I just really took my time. I didn't put any pressure on myself to start the store. I just really focused on gaining the knowledge that I needed and taking the time to figure out all of that stuff. Some of the ways I did that research was um, obviously searching the internet. I was watching videos. I was watching reviews about different heat presses and cutting machines. I was just searching and searching. So Google in this time period is going to become your best friend, that is for sure. The second thing I did before I started my Etsy store was actually making the product. So like I said, I didn't really have any idea what I was doing. So there was quite a bit of trial and error. I wanted to test out a few of my ideas and I also wanted to get a feel for how to actually do this, how to make it really time efficient but also a really great product i just really wanted to make it the best that i could so i made quite a few onesies at the beginning and i was just testing out the different settings on the machine and that kind of stuff so once i actually made the product i actually gave it to my little nephew oliver at the time he was maybe six months old seeing a product and then actually having a product on someone that is a completely different story as i came to realize because when Oliver had it on him being a little baby he was like pulling at it kind of stretching it which obviously I didn't really think about when I was actually making the product so I really got a first-hand look at how how maybe some of the babies would be wearing the product so I realized quite quickly that having stretchy vinyl was going to be key here because that way if obviously you get the stretchy vinyl it can stretch with the baby and with the outfit so definitely make a couple of your products and then I would also recommend as well giving them to family and friends to try out just so you get some feedback from them my next thing obviously doesn't apply to everyone out there but um, maybe you can have a look at what's trending for example if you're doing baby onesies what type of products out there seem to be doing well and seem to be selling so you want to just do a little bit of research there as well of course in the baby onesie niche it is pregnancy announcements they're always going to be a very popular one so if you could take what's trending and make it your own make it uniquely you i think that you would go a long way as well the fourth thing i did which i kind of became a little obsessed with that's just kind of my personality i either love something i'm either all in or i'm not so for this one I was all in is branding. Anything and everything branding, I loved it. So I was figuring out my color scheme, figuring out my fonts, figuring out just what Gemma Rose design will look like. So I was getting a feel for the colors, the fonts. I was figuring out what my icon will be on Etsy, what the banner will be, because that's really important. That's the overall aesthetic of your store. And that's what really the customers are going to see because it's going to be on your return to sender stickers it's going to be on your notepads it's going to be basically everywhere i also was looking up packaging so what kind of packaging is important to me so i was looking up the type of packaging 
the different options to go along with what I just said as well you want to figure out your store name which is also your branding for me it really wasn't really hard to come up with my name if you don't know Gemma Rose Design Gemma Rose was my beautiful cat she lived until she was 20 she had a long great life and she really was my best friend and I just wanted to honor her in some way and for me this was a perfect way to do that the fifth thing that you should do and what i highly recommend is research what you actually can sell on etsy and what you are allowed to be doing so you want to go over the etsy handbook you want to really get a feel for the rules you don't want to be setting up your store and then unfortunately realize that you were doing something wrong and maybe your store can be shut down so just getting a feel for the etsy rules before you jump in would be great you also want to see what you can actually sell on Etsy and what is copyrighted material. Going along with that, you also probably want to look at the small business laws in your area. Can you actually start a small business without having an ABN, which here in Australia is an Australian business number? Do you need to be making a certain amount before you need to actually register your business? Or can you be a small business earning under a certain amount and not having to pay tax? So just getting a feel for that would be great. The sixth thing that you should really think about before jumping into Etsy is your pricing. Now this is quite important because not only is this something that will affect you, it could potentially affect your sales as well. So you just want to really sit down and do some research. You want to actually figure out what's a good profit point for you, what you actually need to be making as profit to keep this going, to keep this being a long-term thing. You don't really want to think about the short-term gain because if you're severely underpricing your items i don't think it can really be a long-term thing so definitely sitting sitting down and working out your profit sitting down and working out the cost that you're putting into actually making this product a good little tip here is to see what other people in your niche are doing see the kind of ballpark figure that they're doing and then see if that is a realistic number for you because it might not be what they're selling it as they might be severely undercutting themselves and they might not be actually having a sustainable business so you just want to use that as a ballpark figure then you should obviously work out how much the product is actually for you to make and how much you actually need to make on top of that to make it a profitable business the seventh thing you should definitely be thinking about is shipping now this is something unfortunately i learned the hard way i didn't really work out the international shipping before I started and I just assumed it was going to be one price for every country so I set it for that limit and unfortunately that was not the case I ended up my first couple of orders they were international orders and I did actually end up losing money just solely because the shipping was so low so I recommend doing an online search and typing in the countries getting a feel for how much it is working out how much standard pricing is how much express pricing is because that obviously does change if you're new and you just don't want to think about it right now you can actually make um you can actually click it so etsy does it for you so that's also a great thing to note as well the eighth thing is etsy seo i actually do have a video all about etsy seo and it's quite a deep dive into it so i will again link that up here so i won't be touching too much on it in this video but Figuring out Etsy SEO and becoming an Etsy SEO whiz um, is definitely a good thing. So I would definitely recommend spending a bit of time there. My ninth and second last thing is product photos. I would hate if you did everything right before starting your store and you didn't really focus on product photos and it actually was your product photos that maybe were too dark or blurry and they just didn't quite sell your amazing product. Online product photography is one of the most important things because like I've said, I feel like a thousand times, they can't see your product, they can't feel your product, they can't try it on, they, they only have your photos to go off. So you need to make those photos and videos as good as you can. So video is quite new on Etsy, that might be a good thing to try out. People are apparently loving the video features. So if you're a tech whiz and you love video, that's a great way to stand out. So making sure your photos are well lit, that is very important. You don't want dark or even overexposed photos, you just want to get it right. So having it well lit, making sure that your product is actually in focus, 
making sure that it's not blurry and getting as many details and as many photos as possible will really go a long way because on Etsy and online in general, photos sell. Tenth and final thing that I did and what you should be doing before you start your Etsy is making quite a lot of products. So getting your Etsy inventory all ready to go. Not only is that going to help you in the Etsy world because Etsy loves the interaction and Etsy loves how active you're being. They love how many products you're putting out there. It, it's also going to help you get found in search because the more products you have, maybe the more times people are likely to see a product of yours. So not only is that great for that, but it's also great for you. If you can make your items and kind of make them in bulk, that would be great because starting out, it can be very stressful, very overwhelming. You might get a lot of orders and not really have kind of expected that. And then you're overworked, you're stressed. So if you can make as many as possible, that would definitely help and it would just bring down your stress levels a lot. There we have it, 10 things on what I personally did before starting my Etsy store and what I definitely think you should as well. I don't think any of these should be overlooked. They are all important. Obviously, some are more important than others, but this is just my personal experience on what I did before starting my Etsy. I really hope that you guys liked this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and let me know down below what you did before you started your Etsy or what you are currently doing. If you are currently one of those people that is searching for every Etsy video and you've come across this video, good luck with your store. I really hope that it's everything that you wish it to be and more. And I hope that you sell a lot of products and you make a lot of great connections with your audience. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye.